I wanted to talk about Balaam's donkey. I'll hear from the pulpit like often or someone's teaching or something and I hear it and I'm like, God used a donkey, he can use you. And I'm like, ah, oh. Balaam's donkey, the story of Balaam's donkey. Balaam's donkey is not our role model. It is not the bar of, I want to be like Balaam's donkey one day. Uh, <laughs> like the fact that he used the donkey, ultimately, if we look at how God is able to use his own creation to bring about his will, the fact that he used the donkey should absolutely terrify us. Like, have you read the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew? You know, there will be those of you who come to me and say, Lord, Lord, didn't we cast out demons in your name? and prophesy in your name and do all these amazing things. And what does he say to them? Depart from me, I never knew you. That's, that's not a complicated passage to interpret, but it is if you want to try to explain it away and make it something else. It's really simple. John 17, three, Jesus defines eternal life as knowing him and he can use anyone he wants. He can use a donkey. So the fact that he's using you is not a validation of where you're at. Yes, I believe that uh, you can prophesy today. I believe the gifts of the Spirit, according to Paul in the uh, letters to the Corinthians, are for today. They're for every normal believer. They're for everyone, and I believe they're still active. But too many times we make like the golden carrot of the kingdom, like, how am I being used by God? And we have this rock star mentality of, I'm going to be a pastor one day, or I'm going to be an evangelist, or I'm an apostle, and I have it on my business card. And it's just like all this nonsense. And it's like, oh my gosh, we, we set the bar so low. Like, God used a donkey so he can use anyone. So I, I agree with that. But the point is people use this to get the crowd pumped up or, or get people excited or encourage them. Like you can be used by God, but like just being used by God is no safe place and anyone can be used by God. So having your barometer on gauging where you are in eternal security, like that, that is not it. Like, do not put your security in, am I being used by God? Your eternal security really is shown forth in the fruits of the Spirit. Does love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, self-control, like really come out of you or do they not? Are you uh, naturally like longing and craving to live the Sermon on the Mount where you're poor in spirit and you mourn and you hunger and thirst for righteousness? Just. Oh my gosh, we set the bar so low sometimes and like God can use a donkey, he can use anyone. Like, oh my gosh. And what we do is we take like these great men of God and we degrade what they accomplished in their generation and focus on like one or two mistakes. I can't tell you how many times I've heard, you know, David was an adulterer. He did not practice adultery. He committed one act of adultery. He was not a practicer of it. If he was, he would not have escorted his nation into the righteousness and the holiness and the just the incredible worship movement that he brought about in Israel in his day. Or the things people say about Moses or, or Jacob or, or uh, just like anyone. We take these people from the Bible and they accomplish great things for God. They live great lives of holiness and righteousness before the Lord and we degrade what they did to focus on one or two mistakes so that we can set the bar low so that we can live more comfortably. I just, I, I can't do that. I, like, how, how do you do that with a, with a clear conscience? And the result of that is ultimately, you know, we think the donkey story is a funny story because God opened the mouth of a donkey and used the donkey to talk to a false prophet. And Oh, my goodness, just like we put the golden carrot of the kingdom of you can be used by the Lord, you can be used by Him, and it's like I want to be used by Him, but how many of us are actually acquainted with our eternal function? It says in Revelation, we're going to be priests before His throne day and night. And if Revelation doesn't give you a picture of what that's going to look like. I don't know what is. As God is moving in his creation and judgments are breaking out, what is going on in heaven? Songs and prayer and proclamation and agreement with his will is just breaking out. Heaven is a loud place and we're gonna be there. And if that sounds like a bummer to you, then, then 
I don't know what to say. <laughs> like, that's our eternal destiny. And one day, his name is going to be written on our forehead, and it says we're going to see his face. We're going to see Yahweh's face. And that kind of stuff excites me. So whatever job description we have temporarily here on earth, like apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, if you work in miracles or just do whatever, like trying to be used by God, that's like temporary seasonal job. One day you're going to be a priest before his throne, ministering to him day and night. And we're going to be so in love with that place of being before his throne, of being a part of the, uh, the worship that's going on in the midst of the seraphim and the living creatures and the angels and the 24 elders and just the seven flames of fire around his throne. Just, oh my goodness, like set your vision on that and whatever seasonal temporary job that he has for you here, it's like, hey, that's cool and this is kind of fun, but this will pass away. Paul says prophecy is gonna pass away, tongues are gonna pass away, like all this stuff's gonna pass away, but what's gonna continue? love him. Oh my goodness, I love him. And when we set the bar so low, we set the standards of righteousness and holiness so low, not that it's a standard that we have to achieve, but it just degrades our ability to be able to even talk about the grace of God, how it actually is an empowerment to cause you to deny ungodliness, like it says in, in Titus 2, 11 through 13. And so anyway, I was just fired up about that. I was thinking about like just I'm so tired of hearing about Balaam's donkey, about how we set that as like the standard sometimes. You know, again, to bring up David's example, like I can live in adultery and still be used by God. Oh my gosh, this is terrible that we think like this. Or God can use a donkey, he can use anyone. And again, I agree with that statement. God can use a donkey, he can use anyone. That should terrify you. Again, Matthew 7, not everyone who comes to me and says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. There's going to be people that were used by him. But he says, again, depart from me. I never knew you. So put the focus on cultivating the love relationship, of cultivating the knowledge of God in your heart that produces love and your mind that produces understanding so you can walk in the authority and the power that he's called his followers to walk in. So I'm sorry if this was a, a little bit too much in your face, but just, I'm like, just, my gosh, Balaam's donkey is not my role model. I don't want to be like Balaam's donkey when I grow up, and you shouldn't either. All right, y'all have a good night. <laughs> See ya.